For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Welcome to this awakened generation with your host, Mazino Abraham Eboku. I come to church to grow. Do you understand? Grow in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Grow in how I fellowship with people. So, because if I come to church and all I'm doing is just fellowshipping, come and sing every day and sing every day, this is good. This is good. If I come to church, Bola read a scripture provoking each other. That provoking means to grow. Do you agree with me? In essence, you see, Pastor wrote to me as a Bible student, he got that straight away. Because when we provoke one another, what are we doing? Eh? We are provoking one another onto good works. So every time we come together, there, a provocation must take place. There must be a provocation. If you come to the assembly of the saints and you are, you are still the same before. See, God does not exactly have a problem with you being a babe in Christ. God has a problem with you not growing. That's where any, any parent, any parent, anyone who is a parent will be troubled when you have a child that's not growing. When you have a child that's not growing, you will be troubled. And that's why it's important that as you come to church, understand that all these things we've said is true. Fellowship, to love, to whatever. But it loses its essence if we are not provoked. Faithly said, you know, she is lifted. This is good. She lives happy and blessed when she comes. But you must grow, 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 grow. Grow in love. Grow in your knowledge of God. Grow in your service to God. Grow in purity of heart to God. Because all these things are vital. If Okay, Pastor Joseph, I will oblige you this time around so that, because what you said does make sense. He asked that we should ask the teenagers. The teenagers are worshipping with us today. So, um, I'm going to have... <laughs> Some of them are already uncomfortable. <laughs> they are sitting in the overflow. So, um, can I have a microphone? Which three teenagers will just agree to tell us why you come to church. Where is your wife today? Is she around? She's not around, okay. Because I know she would have looked at them. She's the pastor of the teenage church. <laughs> and they were... Okay. Okay. Thank you. Pastor. Uh-huh, thank you. Why do you come to church? There should be a microphone with you, yeah? So everything everybody said is true, but I believe that um, this is only a plus. I this is what? This is a plus for me. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm not the Republic speaking, so. Oh, you're already <laughs> talking well, if you don't know. You are speaking well. Yes. I have to take a second look. Who's that? <laughs> talking well. So I believe that in this church, why I come to this church yeah. specifically is because 
everything is intimate especially when it comes to like everybody knows everybody it's a small gathering um what everybody is going especially with the zoom meetings praying for everybody i remember one time when i was in germany and then i joined the zoom meeting um sister neka was like when you um would like to pray for you would like to um for you to sing a song to god and i just feel like everything within this church is intimate um when we sh- when we share like um when we come together everything feels i don't know it feels like i mean a family like home like home exactly that's, that's amazing that's why i come to tv you know pastor joseph thank you because she has said the most important thing she's made my day thank you very much as a pastor to hear that that's so powerful because you know if if we don't walk in love we don't have love we are wasting our time sure you know we are just having another lagbo lagbo or social gathering how do they call it fainty fainty jesu me no fainty we can as well just go and just add Sonia Ade or one of those guys come and join us. It's not different from any other party out there. Just you're deceiving yourself thinking that you're in church. Church must have love and we must be growing. So that Pastor Undu species level of love may be very high and Pastor uh, Captain T.Y. might be very low. I have to put you low somewhere. Sometimes. Because the Bible says that he that is low shall be exalted. Pastor OTBC, I've put you high. You better come low <laughs> so that you will not be debased. Praise God. But I think for me, one of the biggest things that can happen as a church, I have pioneered about, I think this might, I can't remember, fifth church right now that I've pioneered. And the most important thing for me as a pastor, most important for me as a pastor, is that there must be love in the church. If there's no love in the church, it's not a church. And it doesn't mean that we're all going to be perfect, but we must do things in love. Truth can be communicated in love, and even we can resolve our issues in love. Okay? I can, I can talk with you. I can grow in love. The thing is, I must desire to grow. Amen. Can I have one more teenager? There's no more. Oh, there are two. Oh, I'll take the two. Um, okay, hello, church. Hello, pastor. <laughs> He's a pastor <laughs> of the teenagers. Thank you. So, um, one of the reasons I love coming to church is that church is like a... Uh, it helps me. It is a kind of pillar in my life. My week... My Sunday starts my week. The same way breakfast starts your day. Say so, hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> Somebody say... You have not finished. See, are you not learning to be a pastor? When you finish, say, can I get an amen for that? (laughs) So, it is very fundamental to me, and I I wouldn't want to miss breakfast. So, why would I want to miss Sunday? Why would I want to miss church? And it also uh, corrects me from the previous week. If I did something wrong, the previous week, I come to church. What is your level of teenage? I'm I'm 16. 16? Wow. See, I almost feel like I should live here for you and on your year to come and preach. On your year, you say you, are, you, are, you can't speak. Go and sit down there. Who is telling you that? You are going to be a preacher in Jesus' name. You didn't say amen. It doesn't matter whether you say it. Your mother has said amen. I saw her shouting a big amen there. And her amen matters more than yours right now. <laughs> wow. He has not, you see, when a preacher is talking... Don't take microphone from him, is here. When if I wanted to take microphone, he said, no, I have to finish. Please finish, man okay, of God. Okay, so as I say, uh, the mistakes I made from the previous week, I come to church, I hear the word, and I'm corrected. Uh, I learn a few things, like I, I kind of, like the teachings in like, the teens church, like make me like introspect, self-introspect, and like, That's right. uh, I made this mistake this week. Oh, okay, I've heard this then. So you're, you're growing. Yeah. Um, Amazing. I experienced thank growth. You, thank, I you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, with preachers, you have to know how to use sense and say, before it finishes, if not, like father, like son, there's no go finish. 
I know how to handle Pastor Joseph. If you leave him, you know, I won't preach that day. <laughs> Thank you. Go on. Who's the third person? Um, hello, everybody. You can remove your mask. Don't worry. Coronavirus will not catch you. Um, I, come, um, I come to church because it like praising God and spending time in His presence uplifts my, my spirit. Amen. And like... Um, um, I also come to church because like how um, Psalm 150 verse 1 says, um, praise God, um, um, praise Him in His sanctuary. Amen. So, like, so, wow. You see, when you are the pastor's daughter, you, you have to be anointed. Isn't she the most anointed of them all? <laughs> I don't have apologies on here yeah, and uh, full, fools. Keep on preaching, my daughter. <laughs> Praise God. So the presence of God lifts you up. Amen. And that is the truth. That is the truth. Um, her brother, her older brother, called me last week. Um, TJ turns 14, by the way, next week, I believe. Her older brother, who's also turning 21, he said to me, Dad, the message you preached on, he that dwelleth. He hasn't stopped thinking of, about it. That he just wants to dwell in the secret place. I said, Amen. Praise God. All our children will be preachers in Jesus' name. Yeah. They don't have to be preachers on a pulpit, but they will be preachers in the marketplace. They will be preachers wherever they are. They will be apostles. Can you join me, everybody, to just pray for our children, wherever you are? That this world will not take our children. Satan will not have our children. Yesterday we had to pray for one of the children because we got message that um, one of our brothers, his daughter, was not found for a while for, uh, in the university. And after we finished praying, God helped us to know that she was not missing. And we look at, she, she was located. And you know, we cannot take these things for granted. One morning, my wife and I woke up and my son had, had gone to stay with um, a relative and she said they didn't see him all night and they didn't see him in the morning. This was my birthday, the day after my birthday. I said, Satan, you're a liar. And I told them, just wait, give, give us time. I called the mother, we agreed, I started to pray. And I was on my way to the police station. Where will my son be? And we located him in Jesus' name. And the devil is a liar. He had just had a long flight, visited somebody and slept off. And his battery died. Praise God. I don't take these things for granted because, see, in the spirit realm, there's a bread of sorrow. But then there's bread of rejoicing. We will not eat the bread of sorrow on account of our children. In the name of Jesus. These children will be a blessing to us. Hallelujah. Pastor Foluk, please come and pray. Come and stand here. and Let's pray for these children, please. I like your prayers. Very powerful. Come and pray for our children. You have to come up front. Because of our Zoom and our uh, online, you have to come up here. And, and let's pray that God will preserve them. Let me tell you a revelation I had. Come, sir. There was a revelation I had yesterday. You, you have to come so that we can capture you. You know, there's a revelation I had yesterday while praying for the children. I had it before, but it opened up to me. As I was praying for Pastor James's daughter, and you know, she's in Port Harcourt. She just started the university last week. And, you know, it was a thing of joy. And we were rejoicing last week that she's been admitted to the university. She has now started. And I was like, hey, you're not a big boy. And we were celebrating it. That was the bread of rejoicing. And in one week, Bread of rejoicing can turn to bread of sorrow. Pastor Andubisi called me just before he started leading prayer and said, look, Pastor James called, he's broken. His daughter is nowhere to be found. They've not been able to find her. Before he finished, my wife had called me again, ran downstairs. This is very early in the morning. But as we were praying, early in the prayer, I almost stopped the prayer. If we were following, I said, this is the last point I'm going to take. This was about 10 minutes, it's 8 minutes past 7. 
I did that because I had a word in my spirit that told me he will give his angels charge and those angels are not irresponsible that was what I heard so I said how am I going to pray this for now what was God trying to say right there my heart my mind and all of me was telling me stop this prayer meeting the angels are not irresponsible I almost at that point felt as if it was irresponsible to go on so if I, after a while I had to tell my wife take over women you take over because this one maybe I cannot hear so but you know the way the man had was that man was broken if you I cried while he was crying he said pastor I'm dead this is his only daughter anything happens to my daughter I'm, I'm dead <laughs> Even me, my wife was just laughing at me. I, said, I want to cry now. <laughs> I'm talking, I want to cry. Did you know I'm a very emotional person? If you come and hit me now, you'll see a, a real military man. But if you touch my heart, praise God. <laughs> see my wife looking at me. I beg Joe, pray for our children. He will give his angels charge. Those angels are not sleeping on us. You see, I don't want to insult Nigeria. But they are not like some soldiers and armies and police of, you know. This, you know, when you live in a country or in an environment where the law enforcement is not very effective, it, could have, it can affect your thinking. If you live in another country that is effective and you hear angels on guard, it will affect your thinking. I need any kind of limitation that you have about the angels God has. He says he will, do you know the meaning of he will give his angels charge? What does that mean? Huh? Beautiful. They will be responsible for you. <laughs> Did you get that? He will give his angels. I had to repeat it over and over. He will give his angels. That means he, he will give them the responsibility of taking care of you. So that you do not dash your feet over a stone. Ah, it's very important. Just like when the boss almost killed you people. And it was twisting Ella's neck. And the angel twisted it back. And said, no, you're going nowhere. Hallelujah. But you see, all these things, we must walk by faith. Pastor Rotimi came here and he was praying for faith. And I thought that was such a spirit-led prayer. Because that's what the Holy Ghost is speaking to us. Everybody, our faith must come up. If he said he's giving his angels charge over us, we who dwell in the secret place, please accept it. Don't offend the angels. Because sometimes some prayers can become offensive. You, you know when we start saying, angels, please now, where are you? We come here. Angels saying, I've already saved the girl. You people are praying for nothing. You're, you're, you're not praying for nothing because all our prayers are praying into our destiny and our future. I've saved her. Don't worry. But there's one or two people who have faith there and say, Father, we thank you for the angels. They have been taking charge over us. They are responsible angels. They are powerful angels. We give you praise. And the angels are saying, yeah, you're just feeding me with more power. Hallelujah. Please, let's pray that the Lord who has given charge over our children will preserve them continuously. Let's stretch our right hand to the Lord as we pray together. <clears throat> we want to aggregate all the prayers. We've been praying individually and corporately over our children yes, Lord. as many as are here and as many as are connected to us spirit of God we thank you because we are in Goshen yes. we are not in Egypt mm -hmm. yes there is no panic in our hearts as the frogs are invading Egypt the lies the fowls of the air as their water is turning to blood there is a seal, a covering, a covenant over us, over all our children, wherever they are. And we reinforce today in agreement. We reinforce that seal. We put around each and every one of us, of our children, a zone of safety against every evil evil in the day, evil in the night, yes. evil in the air, yes. evil in the land. Wherever they go, to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south, this 
children shall always experience your salvation your hand would always deliver them some storms we cancel on their behalf those storms that they walk through they shall sail safely to the other side they will always enjoy the testimony of the lord yes. for you said you will not allow the righteous to be moved and Paul said, said, none of these things move me, neither can't I my life so dear. But we all shall finish. We shall finish our course with joy. These children shall finish their, finish their course with joy. Yes, and they will not be grounded. They will not be decimated. None of them will become casualties. Yes. We shall never describe them as calamities. Those who are already gone in addiction, in loss, in strange relationships, in unbelief, we deliver them right now. In the name of the Lord, we speak the name of the Lord upon them. We sprinkle the blood of cleansing upon them. Wherever they are, the prodigal shall return. The prodigal yes. shall return. Yes. yes, you will do it, our yes. Father. Yes, this yes. is the promise unto mm. us, O God. Thank you, our Father. Glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Let's bless him one more time. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that surround me, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you. Hallelujah. When I find the joy of reaching your heart, when I found the joy of reaching your heart When all things become holding your life When all things that surround become shadow in the light of I worship you I worship you Come on, let's worship him We are coming to his presence He that dwells in the secret place The reason I live Is to you. Come on, join us by Zoom, by Facebook, whatever. Join us. I worship you.
Mazino Jesus. They know a light on Jesus. Hallelujah. In the spirit realm, when you move around, they say, Veno Jesus. And when the devils are strained, they say, That's Jesus, daughter. In the spirit realm, as they're walking. You know, when this, yesterday, when we were praying for Pastor Andubisi, we were praying during your session for uh, Pastor James's daughter. You know, just let me give you simple tips, pastoral tips for all of us pastors and those of you listening. You know, that when something like that happens, it's because of us Jesus people. Satan actually is testing the waters to see whether I can strike a child. See, that's why I have to come and pray 
in a church and I have to raise prayer for the children. Because if you don't know, if you are not perceptive, every prophet who knows how things operate, there's a testing of the waters. Let us see if we can try these people. So they tried and they saw, no, 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 there's faith here. So you don't drop your guard. We send more fire. If you were thinking, this is Holy Jesus' house. This is Jesus' children. If they were thinking about it, they better dump that thought. Hallelujah. The reason we live is to worship Him. I almost don't even want to preach, but Lord, I love you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I love you.